To me, one of the most disturbing aspects of the Ukraine invasion, and it's safe to assume for anyone, has been the treatment of women and children and the incredible trauma they've endured. In my last interview, I spoke with a courageous CEO and mother living in Kiev, Anastasia Baduchenko, who has taken extreme measures for her safety and the safety of her children during the war. But what about the other millions of children and women who are fleeing? According to a Reuters report, Ukraine's foreign minister, Dmitryo Kuleba, alleged that there have been numerous cases of Russian soldiers raping women in Ukraine. In 2008, the UN Security Council noted that women and girls were a target for rape during invasions, including as a tactic of war to humiliate, dominate, and instill fear. Well, where have the over 2 million people who have fled Ukraine gone? Who has opened up their borders to most Ukrainians? Well, Poland is leading the way, taking in more than 1.2 million Ukrainian refugees, a majority of whom are women and children since the beginning of the Russian invasion on February 24th. Droves of Ukrainian women and children, packed with almost nothing in their bags, are welcomed by nearby Poland. And there have been many stories of welcoming homes with beds made and open arms. One such welcoming person and Polish leader and CEO is Joanna, who will be joining us here today. Joanna is co-founder and VP of Future Callers, who reskills and upskills Ukrainian and other professional women for IT positions. Her motto, tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming, resonates deeply for Ukrainian women fleeing to Poland. Getting small things done together like cooking, evening dinner, volunteer work, and Pizza Night with Ukrainian pop music fills her days. She has taken in three Ukrainian women, Natasha, Alina, and Marina, who have joined her home two weeks ago. They communicate through Google Translate, and it's been challenging for everyone. Just last night, she heard laughter from the girls' room for the first time. Joanna's dedication to Ukrainian women does not stop there. She has used her resources and company, Future Callers, to help reskill Ukrainian women to get IT jobs in Poland. Most women refugees do not have the resources to get jobs in their new country. Joanna is turning all of this around. It's not enough for Joanna to open up her home. She now is thinking ahead to their future, living her vision, tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming. Joanna, welcome to the LinkedIn Live Leader Show on Newsweek. I think me, the show, and Harold, everybody from Warsaw. Joanna, what what a what an amazing thing you're doing. How are you today? Uh, thank you. Extremely intense uh, because, you know, we're trying to work at the same time with projects and helping volunteers. And uh, and I have this uh, one of this uh, kind of refugees uh, kind of center, which I'm helping with uh, fulfillment of their needs and doing activities for the children, for the mothers. Tomorrow we're taking 15 kids uh, to film, uh, which is going to be Ukrainian. So it's uh, extremely, extremely intensive times we have here in Warsaw. But I'm not alone. There's 5,500 volunteers just like me. Uh, every house I know are open to to start uh, you know, a life for, uh, for, uh, for refugees. Uh, people are going to... Uh, doing all they, they can just to accommodate and, and make their life uh, as bearable as it possible in situation everyone from Ukraine found themselves. Well, th this is just incredible what you've done and, and how, how you've opened up your heart and your home and your profession to help reskill uh, Ukrainian women. It's just, it, it's just extraordinary. I, I want to kind of go back and we'll start with going back. What has this last month been like for you? What has it been like up to this this day? Um, bring me through that. Tell me more about that. Well, you know, we woke up on Friday, it was Friday, Thursday, and first thing I did, I call uh, a lady who works at my house to find out if there's any way we can support her and her family. And and since then, you know, we all start crying, we all start thinking what we can do, and immediately, just, just incredible what's happening in Poland, people start work, start to uh, 
trying to go to the uh, to the for, uh, to the uh, actually any possible way with their private cars to drive to the borders to bring Ukrainians from the borders to any cities to any places mostly to Warsaw. Uh, people are starting organizing themselves to uh, you know for the shelters. There's right away a Facebook uh, website, Facebook page, which was already is like almost one million people in Poland were doing help for the Ukrainians. So we intensively started to think how we can help. Are they going to the borders, uh, uh, preparing our houses? Uh, there was already a list of uh, our, our NGOs were starting listing and houses for uh, for people. So uh, my Friday was basically intensive that way. Saturday I joined as a volunteer for the Warsaw uh, Center uh, for Refugees and I was supplying uh, for the food, for uh, all the important uh, elements for the kids. And for, since then I'm working on this kind of refugee center which has moved to the closer to my neighborhood. And I'm ex and everyone is involved. You know, we there's so much work to do on every level, from the medical help to the people who are in Ukraine, to the borders, to now actually thinking about how to employ these people, how to get them help, how to help the children who have been traumatized, and it's, and what's important, how to support women. So tell me about this. When when you greet uh, and you found uh, refugees, how did you go through that process? What was the process to find and to sort of hold yourself out to help uh, Ukrainian women? What was that process like for you? Well, it's very simple because right away, you know, the, this, we have unbelievable NGOs and unbelievable individual citizen movement. So people right away start uh, uh, as kind of a uh, helpline saying, if you want to offer your house, please fill this form and we'll call you. And in matter basically of 12 hours since I filled the form and kind of offered my house, uh, this lady from this help center called me. They're all these volunteers, I have to say, this is non-government help, it's all NGOs. And they say, we have these three girls, would you like to help uh, and, and you know, provide an accommodation? Then I was at the center and for girls, there was American boys, uh, students, and they said, can we... Can you second take them home because they had no place to live? So basically, everyone just opened their houses. And if you think about it, 93% of all the refugees, refugees which are in Poland, are in the houses. They're not in the camps. So now, actually, we are overloaded because there is a lot of a lot of refugees who come from Ukraine want to stay in big cities like in Warsaw. Uh, there's a lot of openings for them in smaller cities, even villages, but they want to still stay in Warsaw. So now we have really a crisis, and that's why we call in to other countries to help and help us do the same thing as we do, be a host and bring the people in the, the home, integrate them with your society, uh, with the schools and everything that's done. So if you were, to, you were to speak and to Ukrainian women and children right now, Ukrainian women, and said what they can do right now, because people can hear us right now in, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So if you were to speak to them and to open up uh, sort of all open up uh, people in Poland to come, right? Um, what would they need to do? What would I, as a Ukrainian woman, well, do? Get in touch with me. I will, I'm gonna, I will reach you and we will help you to organize, for example, uh, the best thing if you can do, for example, to declare that you're going to take 30 women, 40 women, uh, because they want to live in groups or uh, they don't want to go alone. And and then you can, for example, the, the this, this ladies can have a visa to Canada. They get a, a get a, a transport, and you assure them a accommodation and probably work. Uh, we'll help you to uh, send them abroad because we want them to have decent life, and we want them as quickly possible to integrate with societies and find a nice, welcoming home, just as we do it in Poland. So you can contact me, and I can uh, provide you with the uh, information to the NGOs which uh, can help to organize this thing. Because at the moment, it's uh, there's not much, there's much yet to centralize, organize uh, sort of uh, NGO or whatever uh, what it is. There's a lot of places, there's a lot of hosts who have women in their homes. And now they're thinking what they should do next. Maybe should go outside Poland and start their, their life or they should stay in Poland and, uh, and continue their life. So we are very, we can manage on uh, gathering this kind of group of women with the families because there's also grandmothers, there's often teenagers, there's, there's sometimes, you know, adolescent son. So often we have a group of six, eight, women who like to be, live in a group. So there's some, sometimes people call me, can you send me a, a, a mother with a, a year old boy or a year old girl? Say, this is difficult because they don't want to live alone. If you think about it, think about a, a cohort, 
30 people, 50 people who we can basically uh, send abroad and help them uh, and you can help them and become just a house host as we are in Poland. It's just amazing. And, and so so for those those who are in Poland right now with you and who are under Poland care and your care, uh, how many are you seeing want to stay there and see possibilities for a career, a life and if they do, what are they seeing for themselves? Mm -hmm. Well, this is where actually we stand in because uh, we think uh, that white, kind of blue collars workers, women who are actually uh, this kind of, they're going to be very well implement, integrated because there is so much jobs for them in Poland. But we worry about the white collars workers, the women who are in professions like law, law firms, being in uh, advertising, in being maybe in, even in technology. If you think 45% of STEM, are, are in Ukraine are women, such as extremely high uh, position. So we see this really group of these women who are in, among these uh, refugees, which is at the moment 1,300,000, and we want to help them to retrain to tech jobs so they can be quickly integrated to fantastic opportunities, which is in, in IT, and we can retrain them and help them to start working from Poland to as a remote worker to work for US, to work for EU, EU countries, and maybe you know when the war finished, hopefully as soon as possible, they can come back to Ukraine and, and stay there and work as an IT professional if they decide to. So we we want to get them dignified jobs, and we don't want them to sort of drop from the white collar, you know, very qualified. Uh, kind of careers and because there's not enough jobs like that because they don't speak Polish so they will kind of drop to the blue blue collars workers so that's what we wanted to do is to retrain the women who speak English and, and they have uh, and a willingness to uh, to become an IT as you know IT is a very very wide career path and we want to help them. So we are organizing now uh, with the support of companies and we invite you also from US if you can join us, if you want to endorse someone, if you want to sponsor this kind of program. So we can do a, a training for women to go to uh, to Python developer, to be a Scrum master, to be cloud practitioners, with, for example, Amazon Web Services, which I partner. So this kind of program we want to start. So we quickly retrain women so they can get a dignified employment, not dropping to uh, white uh, blue collars uh, work. It's a huge business opportunity uh, for the world. Um, you know, as we, as we know, Upwork uh, shut down all Russian and Belarus uh, workers, uh, all software developers, uh, and Ukraine uh, people who are fleeing from Ukraine now have a unique opportunity, and the world is a unique opportunity for people like you who are upskilling and reskilling, uh, people who are just fleeing and are are under such duress and stress, the enormous stress that they have. So you you had mentioned kind of uh, 1.3 million people and growing. I mean that's a lot of people. So the the question I, I have is you know do you are you do you need help what resources and help do you need yes. with that well, tell us more about what what that help is yeah okay well we need help we need you guys to join uh, to kind of reach your government and tell them that you really know we need to help because our government doesn't listen to that and he they pride themselves that we're doing extremely great work but the job is done by the individuals by the citizens by ngos now we need to have professional help which means we won't have we need to have salary and jobs for people who are now working with uh, with refugees this cannot be done by volunteers so please reach out to our government say that it has to be get professional help we know there are great companies great organizations we can come here and provide support second thing you can help is to get uh, as i mentioned you know maybe some Ukraine diaspora living in Canada. Ukraine diaspora living in UK, and you can organize yourself, and and we can send you. We can provide you with uh, people who can be directed to US to Canada and become hosts as we ourselves. So we can help you because we're not going to manage to get all these people with the decent jobs in decent accommodation. So we we think some people will need to go outside of Poland. Third thing is like what we do is to help us to reskill women. And you can become our partner. You can be endorsing. We can be. You can be the, per, the company which basically gonna give jobs to the woman who we're gonna train. And of course, we need still 
uh, any support in terms of you know uh, with medications, with things like you know uh, things help uh, food for the kids and all of that kind of things, which is, has to be done. But uh, it, and we should be scheduled directly uh, directed to NGOs, organization, uh, which actually the ones who are now serving all of this uh, this woman uh, at the house, at the houses, or actually in the, in the shelters, which is still very limited. So yes, there's a lot of things you can do and help us. And they run the gamut I mean, from professional to medical and and other. So it's it's, it's an, it, the the needs are definitely at at the top level right now. That so if it, there are certainly so many companies that require help with with uh, programming, with network administration, uh, with Scrum masters, project management. So uh, you know to the companies out there today, and largely people that we speak with are, are companies, are entrepreneurs, they're CEOs, they're coaches, or consultants, um, or they're people just really concerned and want to help. Help. And, you know, there's there. So tell me, like, if if you do want to hire, you, you know, uh, Ukrainian uh, reskilled uh, workers, do, would it just be to go to to you and ask you, is there a, a central repository, um, you know, because we all want to help. And there's and many people I'd say it's safe or reasonable. Assume there's a lot of people want to help. So we go to you and we say and you have a way to to identify who they are and who's being reskilled is that is that kind of is that how yes i mean this is what we do because we at the we are online company of reskilling company career change company we are operating in poland for five years we have about three thousand people we retrain so we have uh, very well capabilities to do that. Uh, we are now in the process of work on translating all the kind of uh, tutorials or materials and getting teachers to so we can do it in English. Uh, so if you are interested in hiring uh, a, a career woman who are going to change jobs to IT and you say, yes, Anna, I want to endorse the training or I'm going to endorse her, uh, uh, we're going to hire them once you finish the training, please contact me because we need to have a partners who are going to be both help us to finance this program and partners who are going to uh, get jobs uh, once to get, provide jobs from remote jobs because all the training is that we do is remote and we we believe in remote work after that so um, yes contact me if you would like to endorse this kind of program or you want to uh, help to uh, to get jobs for women who are going to train we we think it's going to take us about uh, three months to have already people from ready to uh, to work uh, and start their careers in it and we are working with many. We, since we have such a huge support network, we know how to reach the, the white collars Ukrainian who are willing to to start this kind of retraining programs. Well, let's, let's go to the the personal side, the human side uh, of, of all of this, that, which is interesting. Uh, they're all personal and human, of course. But Natasha, Alina, Marina, who you took in, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and t so, how did they, they they came in and they joined your home? And I'm hearing about all these wonderful people like you who are opening their homes. Um, are they there now, Natasha, Alina, and Marina? Are they? No, we, I'm mm -hmm. at the office. Actually, they the at the moment they're volunteering because uh, they involve as a volunteers as well. Uh, yesterday they work at the shelter with children. Today they're working with uh, this, our, our neighbors who are starting uh, a neighborhood center. Uh, for Ukrainians, so they are there to help to, pro uh, you know, to just uh, to make this happen. Uh, they don't speak English, unfortunately. They we communicate through my limited Russian, and with this new application, which is hi, hi, hi say hi. Uh, so it's better than even Google Translate. And someone from Lim uh, from LinkedIn suggested it to me. So thank you very much because it really improved my life. Uh, they are not the ones who are going to be typical retrained because they they have don't they don't have this English. They are starting learning Polish, and we uh, and I think next week we're going to start uh, helping them for, to find jobs. But it's they are limited because of the language. Uh, but they they're doing they're going well. They're starting going more and more outside, uh, exploring to our neighborhood, and I want to try to uh, get them uh, you know to. Be, working with the children and mothers who are at the, at the shelter. So I think it's something that they can see themselves as they actually uh, provide into the community. And this is a way of integrating them as well. So um, I think, um, you know, from what we know when we talk to psychologists and we, because there's so much already a kind of network, we know we have to support them and give them time. We know we have to let them be in their room. Uh, and it's really because they're going through a huge drama. Uh, 
unfortunately, uh, Natasha, Rina, and Miriam, they came to me right away, so didn't spend too much time in the, you know, in the underground, uh, living in, you know, in wagons of, of metro. And I know women who are in the shelters, they show me the pictures and how it was. And, and we're getting much more uh, damaged people at the moment because they've been in, 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 during the war for you know, a week, 10 days, and they had to spend a nightmare. So they are fortunate to, to leave uh, uh, Kiev right away because they, they came to Poland on basically a day after uh, the, war, the war started. But uh, it is traumat traumatized and we all extremely uh, want to help them. And uh, that's why actually I want to reach more to, to also the white colors because I think they're going to be, they need help to kind of adjust it to, uh, to kind of life they might have to leave here in Poland for some time before the war ends and you know the life becomes normal again if in Ukraine and that's what I'm saying is a lot of the white collar as you as you call it are staying in Ukraine and Kiev in their locations and uh, d digging in if you will and the question I have for you is you know you know what what are ways that they can make their way in because uh, like you said the damaged people, people who are becoming more damaged psychologically and harmed uh, physically is increasing by the day, if not by the hour. Um, and I'd like to learn more about that as well from you in terms of what you've seen in terms of emotional, physical damage. But first, you know, uh, well, tell me more first about that. How, how, what kind of physical, emotional damage have you seen and, and how has it changed as of late? Mm -hmm. Well, we noticed that they are very closed and uh, they don't want to, for example, leave. For example, in the in the shelters where I'm, I'm volunteering, we will try to do uh, activities for the children, and uh, we thought of taking uh, leaving the mothers for a while so they can relax and take uh, children outside to the park or going to the uh, you know kind of uh, playground and kind of activities. It took us two days because women didn't want to uh, separate from the children because they felt so much a drama. So they, they were closed themselves in rooms and they stay like that. Uh, two days later, uh, we uh, were able to bring 15 kids to this kind of uh, this kind of trampoline to playground special uh, place. And, and mothers join us and they're extremely happy. And I know it, it we're starting small by small steps to open it up, but it would take time. Uh, they have to feel secure. That's why I think it's so important. And so so I'm so proud that we succeeded to getting all these people into the homes, homes because it's so different that you are with the family, that you are already in kind of, uh, you know, home made cooking, that you are, uh, a same time you are not with the crowd of your other uh, colleagues from, from Ukraine, but at least you are, you know, in a kind of very safe and warm environment. Uh, but as now there's, you know, less and less space for people to, in their houses, to, so we are starting to have this kind of shelters, temporary shelters, because some people are leaving to, they find a house, for example, outside of Poland, or they're going out from outside our country. Uh, but it's tremendous stress. They feel uh, they're close. They don't want to speak too much, and you know it's hardly to see them a smile. So like they they seem to be extremely in in focus on themselves to think about the thoughts about what's going to be the future. Um, if they're going to be managed to have decent life, how they're going to manage with the kids. And, you know, there's a tremendous need for psychologists at the moment. I was at the, uh, we all need help for the children uh, who've been, you know, living with bombs and living in shelters uh, on the, in underground in Kiev, in different Kharkov, in different cities. You know, it just, it just, they had to separate from the fathers. Uh, it just, just, you know, we cannot even imagine what they went through. So it really takes them time to accommodate and it takes them time to, to, to live through this horrors we have, they had. And that's why it's very important to get them integrated with their normal life, with normal people, with uh, societies, with other children. But it has to be, it's, it's a process, which is going to take week, two weeks before th then uh, they can actually enter to normal life. But I always seen, you know, the 15 kids were with me on Sunday. They were laughing. They were they were very happy. They they were reaching for, you know, for charitos and they were reaching for, for um, for fruits. And tomorrow we're going to cinema from from other kids. So you know, um, I will let you know. But I think um, it's it's a process. But I'm very positive we will manage. 
I remember you saying that you're listening now to your Ukrainian pop music and hearing some laughter in the girls' room, which is different than before. First time, first for the, time. For the first time, and that, that must be- A week later, it was amazing, it was one amazing. Week later. And I hear this about post-traumatic stress syndrome, um, and uh, I, I, talking to Anastasia Barachinko from Kiev, uh, she's there still. Um, and uh, you know the the things you're talking about is it, it, it's getting worse, and people are coming in, and there's a complete acknowledgement of the PTSD. And you you touched on the unconscionable elements, leaving your father. Uh, going across to another country, leaving everything behind, all of your possessions, and only having your mother um, to be with uh, is just unconscionable. It's just it's not something we can imagine. Um, and uh, you know, I think no my food, no yes. no clothes, no toys. You know, you love everything because there's no space. You know, they leave and they have they don't have any uh, you know any luggage at all. They have to get everything here in Warsaw, in Poland. It's, you know, but my great grandmother did that too in 1970 with the Bolshevik revolution. She had to leave uh, from, from the, from Ukraine because we're Polish uh, landowners and she left a huge, huge possession, a huge palace with two children and backpack and she ran to the forest and, uh, you know, she had to, she, for weeks she traveled to cross the uh, border and moved to Poland and she lost everything, you know, whole amazing wealth was just this, once and for all finished so i know what they're going through and uh but you know it's not like you open the door and they, yes we of course this they cry they said how uh, grateful they are but you know it's they, they it's so tangible because they lost so everything and they don't know they didn't even thought about going to warsaw or krakow or for us no one will thought about going in our, to the cities in march they probably thought want to go to rome to dubai and then you know they're here and they don't know how to find themselves you know uh, so there's simple things like you know uh, showing them how to uh, how to use metro how how to use the tram thank god everything's free for ukraine at the moment so they don't have to go and run to buy tickets but it's a simple thing to show them you know how they manage it just it just uh, you know one thing is to get out and then second thing is to find yourself in a totally different country just like just think if, if they go through the border there's all these po pe people's individuals with the sign we take you home but they don't know who the person is they don't know where they're going to go they, they don't know uh, if they're not going to be you know in some terrible situation and you have to make decision at the point where you're going to go who with who you're going to go so it just it just it is terrible I, i've you know it's my heart it breaks every day in, in single pieces when you hear and see the situation but you know what Ukrainian women are extremely proud and extremely strong. I don't. I didn't see much crying. I saw a lot of pride. I saw people, women who show me pictures of the life they had: wonderful houses, wonderful cars, good living, and you know they're gonna survive because they have so much strength in themselves, and uh, you know they really want to do it. Some of them right away say, "I want to work. I want to, you know, be independent. Help me to find job." You know, I, there's so much trend. There's so much kind of conviction. This yes, we can do it, and uh, so much focus on already on the future, on ba on making myself well, and for me and for my children. So I really believe that we all gonna make it, and we, with the help of the Korean woman who make this terrible, terrible experiment, which was done by Putin, as successful for them, they they will survive, and because they're strong, and they know what they want. And it really is a testament to uh, to Polish people, people in Poland, how wonderfully open you are and understanding for you to to just even understand the strength of of the Ukrainian people to, and and to see that it's their strength. They're, they're not worried. They're they're not. They, they don't have this kind of a sadness that's deep and crying and and begging for help at all. It's not that kind of refugee. It's as strong capable people who are ready to move to the next level in the life because they're resilient. They're resilient. And you recognize that and so many others. You had mentioned about how there's this uh, sign that people have, we take you in. And mm -hmm. there has to be a level of trust when that, that occurs. How can people in Poland uh, overcome that level of trust? Uh, it, sort of so to help Ukrainian people understand that they are safe with them, that they won't be harmed, that they perhaps are going to be, they'll be helped. How, how is that 
Is is there a way that that is becoming more standard or you could standardize it or have some tips for people mm -hmm. to help them overcome, well, get to that trust? As level? I mentioned, there's a already, you know, huge movement and I'm, I'm really, really impressed by uh, what our society is doing. And I think we should get all Nobel Prize because, you know, everyone is involved and the caring opening I never see in my life. Really, so uh, people are saying about you know preparing the rooms, preparing the, you know when, when people already know that someone's coming to the house, there's a post immediately on the Facebook. Hey guys, there's a lady with three small kids coming. Can you please help me to get the food, the the clothing because they don't have the toys? And in a matter of hour, they get everything because the neighbors right away bring things to the house. So uh, if they need to get you know, there's people who basically furnishing the houses they have or apartments which are free for example they wanted to rent it they don't they're not renting it they give it for free so they're furnishing quickly in mother my friend she just did that uh, two days ago she got a, a family of, of eight and in mother she said you know i put a post on a facebook that i'm furnishing this i'm leaving giving this my apartment for the family and i say i need beds i need this and that she said i woke up in the morning i had a list of my friends saying that everything is already provided. I didn't have to do anything. So that's one thing. Second thing people want to do, like, you know, preparing home uh, uh, home cooking, asking them, and they already tips, like what kind of Ukrainian people like to eat. And, uh, you know, we, they're preparing a, uh, a box, they're preparing the music, uh, they're preparing, a, you know, small things. Uh, so they're going to, but the most important, what I'm missing, I think they need to have their own space, closed space, because probably even for a few, even days, they're going to want to be just stay in the room because they want to kind of get the first space. They're going to feel comfortable and mostly secure. And then you open up a little bit. So there's a lot of, you know, tips in terms of uh, how you prepare your house for entering of the of the Ukrainian family. And then, of course, then you're starting off, uh, you know, communicating uh, about, you know, getting the support for the children. Do you need psychological support? Uh, integrating with the, you've got all the schools and kindergartens already now free and open for Ukrainian children. And there are uh, Ukrainian teachers uh, being hired. There are mostly volunteers. They psychologists help. So, uh, so we kind of just try to ready how we can get the support for them to feel well and comfortable and and damage control because we have that. I know we, we get everyone, we get people who are, have cancers, we have people who are psychiatrists uh, in help. You know, you just think we need, we have to hold a whole society, uh, mostly of course without men, but you know, there's people who have tremendous difficulties. We have animals you know the people coming with their puppies and uh with their big dogs small dogs cats and you know you have to so people find them a house which are going to be okay with with animals you know it's just like just thing like he's uh, one day there's a bomb and everyone just run run for their life and we have you know whole across society of different people and you know in poland here uh, you know we are used we have a lot of ukrainians but usually they were you know blue collar workers and uh, and now we get you know doctors we have lawyers we have uh, students we have you know opera singers we have every possible person from society from ukraine who never thought of living of their country they feel very well they're very com comfortable and they're extremely happy they love the country you know, that's why also you when we ask, why don't you want to leave? And they say, you know, I like Warsaw because Warsaw reminds me of Kiev. I want to be in Poland because I'm close to my country. Uh, you have similar culture, you have similar language. And I want to be close just in case, you know, my family will leave because there's a lot of people who don't want to leave, but they decide to leave the border. I want to quickly able to go and help them to come from the borders to safe uh, place I am in now in, in Poland. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to you? The, <laughs> the, the way that your, uh, your hospitality, the way you open up to people, the way that you, you bring people in, it, it's so kind. Um, and it, it, it's, but it's really true. And it, I'm, not, I'm not unique. I, I just, as I speak, I have phone calls and phone calls on my friends who are doing the same. I have a friend who she organized alone with huge, a huge community of her friends, a welcome center by the station in Warsaw, and where they have provide food for everyone, they have support, and the citizens who are doing as a volunteer. So, you know, there's an unbelievable movement 
all across Poland, now in Warsaw, all across Poland, that everyone wants to help. It is, I don't know, it is, I never see anything like that in the world that you have this, everyone wants to help and make them as much possible and as try to get the damage control as quickly as possible so these people can live and survive we, and they can, you know, be fine here. Because maybe because we never got this uh, in 1939, I don't know, but maybe because we, we know what to be immigrant. I know I was an immigrant for 12 years in Canada and I got, got wonderful support and that's why I believe this, uh, this way to do, to, we have to pay back. Uh, but it's truly, it's all everyone in Poland. So please don't listen to these terrible things uh, they try to do, black PR, because just just come and see what's happening. See the volunteers at the train station. See the volunteers at the uh, borders. People giving food, their own food. They're making food, sandwiches, soups, and providing. You know, at just the moment in my neighborhood, there's a centers doing a by volunteers uh, support. So it's, there's no one in Poland who's not involved uh, in printing, accommodating, and supporting Ukrainians in Poland. And it sounds like uh, it's growing because you're bringing in Ukrainian refugees and they're volunteering as well and helping others. And you're forming a new culture, really, yes. of Ukrainians and, Pol and, and, and Polish. So it's, I mean, what a wonderful way of bringing two cultures together and creating something even better. It sounds like the beginning of really a transformation for Poland and for Europe. Yeah, and I hope they will be joined. I, show, I, ho I hope the movement we started in Poland is going to go across borders. And I want you to become hosts as we are, uh, because I believe only that way. Don't build shelters, don't build, build refugee camps, build a network of hosts who help and accommodate and integrate people to the societies. So we're going to be, we won't create new ghettos. We don't want to have France ghettos. We don't want to have Greece ghettos. We want to have people, uh, if every family or one of the 10 family brings a woman with a kid or a few women with a kid, just think about how we're going to save the societies, how we're going to create a wonderful, safe and, you know, sustainable uh, societies. And, and that's how that's what uh, really attracted me to your story, uh, Joanna, is that you're not only bringing in people and you're helping them and you're helping them with volunteers and all, all their psychological aspects. You've said you said, well, it's not enough. I want to I want to look at the sustainable aspects of this so that we can help you sustain within in, in the society. So you used your company and your resources and mm -hmm. said, I'm going to help upskill and reskill, which is what I do anyway. And uh, so what an amazing thing you're doing. You know, it, you're, it really is an example for the world. And I, I hope uh, it, is. it really truly is. It's, a, it's an example it's a for the world. It's a social experiment. And I just hope other countries will adopt it because, we, it, you know, it was spontaneous. But this spontaneity has to be, you know, for the own. And, uh, and I think uh, now we need to get professionalized help because it cannot be, uh, uh, you know, own volunteers. There needs to be a system from a government support system for people who work for like us. Uh, so they could get some financial help. Uh, and we need to have, a, a, you know, a experts and managers to kind of make sure that this what is spontaneously done by citizens of Poland who actually have a movement which actually has kind of a, a sustainability and push forward and get people uh, and contaminated with this idea of helping and integrating with society, not just building a camps, refugees camps, building ghettos and putting people in, you know, in the, on their, on the side, but strong integration, but you know, on a small level. If we were it's to a, it's an experiment, it's an experiment that is is truly working and is showing amazing results. And, you know, if we were to compare what you just said, refugee camps versus welcoming with open arms and creating a sustainable life and future, I think it's really clear which one has is dysfunctional, and which one is extremely functional and welcoming. Joanna, you're just extraordinary. Um, I'm no, I'm not extraordinary. I'm just one of the hundreds of thousands of others, Polish women and men who are really involved in make this happen. I'm not extraordinary. I'm just, I, I am the one who has able the opportunity to speak, but I speak on behalf of all my comrades and my comrades who are today at the moment 
you know, they're extremely stressed because we have to manage being mothers and, and, and wives and, uh, and managers and CEOs. And that's why we want you to get us uh, and help us that you're going to be involved and help us either to understanding programs like me, being a host and bring other Ukrainians to your country and assisting our government so they can have professional kind of support and help uh, providing funds and or helps uh, with the people here uh, because we are not one of the richest countries. We don't have, we, you know, we, we are. Well, it looks like the end of the broadcast. Uh, Joanna seemed to have fallen off. Uh, what an incredible interview. Uh, we learned a lot from Joanna today, and we'll place some links in the bottom so you can know how to get involved. Uh, Joanna did call for psychiatrists, coaches, consultants, and also laid down a model for how we can really bring uh, refugees in, uh, as well as how to bring refugees into our country. Uh, it was welcoming, it was caring, uh, it was incredible and in how they're putting up signs in the uh, in train stations and in streets and saying, I'll come to me, I'll take you in. And then learning about the Ukrainian culture, um, cooking their foods, understanding their language, uh, welcoming them uh, in ways that really care for their psychological well-being. Um, just incredible, just incredible what Joanna's doing. And she's creating this new reskilling program for Ukrainian women to uh, to get new jobs and to make a new life in Warsaw. This is the example for a humanitarian release effort that all countries should follow around the world. And uh, Poland is the example. It is the best practice for bringing in refugees. If you want to become involved with this or want to learn more from Joanna, uh, comment here. Uh, if you want to let Joanna know anything that you do that you can be of help or any of your expertise can be of help, comment there below and Joanna will get it and I'm sure she'll comment back. Thanks everybody for joining today on this LinkedIn Live. Be well, stay safe. The best to you all in Ukraine for a better life and better days.